Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everyone, welcome to Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. This week we have a question from John Bamber. John asked, can you please explain second curtain sync? Well, John, you bet. Second curtain sync is something that is usually done in low light situations when you're shooting with an on-camera flash with a slow shutter speed. But before we get into the details, first we need to go over a couple of things. And the first thing that you need to understand is how your camera's shutter works. Now the shutter is made up of two curtains that open and close to reveal and hide light from our camera's sensor. Now these curtains have names. It's the first curtain and the second curtain, or sometimes they're called the front and rear curtain. And here's how they work. When you press the shutter release on your camera, the first curtain opens to reveal light to your sensor. Then the second curtain closes and then everything resets for the next shot. Well, when we add a flash to our camera, we can tell it to fire right after the first curtain opens or just before the second curtain begins to close. If we tell our flash to fire just before the second curtain closes, well, we're using second curtain sync. Now, most photographers call this rear curtain sync instead of second curtain sync, but they're doing the same thing. Now, depending on when our flash fires, we can get some very interesting results. Now, this is especially true when our shutter speed is set to a very slow speed. And remember, that's when you're going to normally be using rear curtain sync. Also remember, anything that moves while the shutter is open becomes blurred, and a slow shutter speed means that we have a lot of blurry things in our image. Now in episode 17, I showed you how you can use a flash to freeze motion. In this episode, I'll show you how you can combine a slow shutter speed and a flash to get things that are both blurred and frozen at the same time. And I'll show you how you can use front and rear curtain sync to control how things are frozen and blurred. Now, this all might sound really complicated, but it's actually pretty simple. Now, to show you how things work, what we really need to do is grab our cameras and head outside. Well, let me show you how to set your rear curtain sync on a Canon flash. It's pretty simple. Right here on the flash, there's a little button. When you push that the very first time, that sets your flash in high speed sync mode. That's for shooting outside in really bright scenarios. The second time you push that button, well, you get these three little triangles, and that means that the flash is in rear curtain sync and you're all set to go. Now, uh, some Canon flashes or flashes that are made for Canon behave a little bit differently. So if your flash doesn't have that button, check your user manual to know exactly how to set your flash to rear curtain sync. Well, next up, let's take a look at how Nikon does it because they don't set rear curtain sync on the flash. You do it from inside the camera itself. So let's look at that next. All right, on a Nikon camera, it's a little bit different to set your rear curtain sync. You actually have a little button on the side of your camera that has a little flash icon. Sometimes on the, some of the Nikons, it's up here at the top. But you push that and hold it, and when you do, there's a little window right here, and then you can roll the back dial and turn on rear curtain sync or uh, red eye reduction, some other things. But when it says rear, you know that your rear curtain sync is set and you're all ready to go. All right, so what I'm doing here is I have my camera set to aperture priority mode. We're at ISO 400, and I've set my, uh, my flash to rear curtain sync. And so as these cars are going by, what you'll see is that the flash fires at the end. So here we go. We got some more cars. Look right at me, Brenda. Beautiful. Just like that. All right, now take a look at these photos, and you can see that the cars are blurred, but Brenda is totally frozen. Now the other thing that's really wacky is I can actually take this off my tripod and I can have some movement. So I'll move around and uh, because this is freezing at the very last second, it's freezing Brenda. So let me explain a little bit more uh, about what's happening there. So let's say that the flash fired as soon as the first curtain opened. Well, the flash would freeze her, but then if she continued to move, or if I continued to move, well, that movement would actually come into the lens while the shutter's still open, and we'd get blur on top of the frozen Brenda. But when we have the flash fire at the end, what's happening is we're having blurred Brenda, but at the very last second, the flash fires, and it has a frozen Brenda on top of blurred Brenda, and so it looks much more pleasing. So to illustrate that, I'm actually gonna move around a little bit, and uh, we'll show you how she is frozen with this flash. So look right at me, beautiful, just like that. And I'm moving, there we go, we got some cars coming in here, just like that, and a little bit more, excellent. Okay, 
Now we'll take a look at this and you can clearly see that there is a blurred outline of Brenda, but then there is that frozen Brenda right on top. Now the practical application of this is uh, when you're shooting like a wedding reception uh, or an engagement party or you're shooting some kind of event where you have really, really low light, uh, the best thing to do is use rear curtain sync on your camera because you can actually get away with some movement of your camera or your subject and everything will be frozen and look great. Now as cool as our demonstration with Brenda was to show you how effective rear curtain sync is in low light situations, a much easier way to understand rear curtain sync is to shoot well, cars zipping by at night. Now what I've done is I've shot two pictures of two different cars and on the first one I used normal uh, flash firing when it's right after the first curtain. What happens is as soon as the flash fire it freezes the car and then the car continues to travel and so it looks like the lights are shooting out of the front of the car, which is what you would want for normal headlights, but the tail lights look weird because it looks like the tail lights are going into the car itself. Well, when I put it on rear curtain sync and shot a different car, what happens is the, uh, the lights start to blur and at the last second, the flash fires and freezes the car. And so the lights trail the car instead of uh, shoot out from the front. So it just shows you how uh, the uh, car is frozen either at the beginning of the exposure or at the end. And because of that, the blur from the lights will either show up in front or behind the car. Well, there you have it. It's rear curtain sync. It's a very simple tool that will really help you make some interesting photos. Well, John sent us a great question this week. If you have a question about photography, well, I'd love to hear it. Please send your questions to me at askmark at adorama.com and I might just use your question in our next show. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.